this is the noise we're trying to get rid of while we drive because it's loud and pretty embarrassing, but basically any bump. It just sounds awful and it's embarrassing towing this thing. It doesn't even have that many miles on it. So this is my squeaky trailer fender. This is my 2018 Apex Nano. Uh, it's a 193 BHS model. And uh, it resides here in Arizona. So we don't get a lot of salt or you know muck or anything like that that's gonna dry out any bushings or anything like that. But when I purchased this, it was driven from Indiana through the snow, through the salt roads. And I think that's what caused a lot of what I got going on. Uh, so down here, those are the shackle links and the spring, the suspension link that attaches the suspension and the springs to the frame. And those things just squeak like heck. And that's what all that noise is coming from. And there's a single bolt mounting point in the front that we'll be changing out to. So the way we're gonna fix this is I've got this wet bolt kit that I got from E-Trailer. It's made by Dexter. And it gives you bolts that are kind of hollow in the center. And they have Zerk fittings on the end. So you can pump grease inside basically the spring attachments and the links and the grease will come out these little holes now what we have factory on this setup is a dexter d44 axle this is a big single axle for a trailer and we're going to be replacing those bolts with these so we can pump grease inside these links and we're going to do the same thing on the front but again that's a single bolt um, the Dexter kit's really nice, so they give you bronze bushings and bronze guides, whereas the factory ones were plastic. They're probably completely gone from what other people tell me. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to stop the video here in just a second. I've got to get this uh, trailer lifted, supported, the wheel off so I can access everything. And then I'm going to use a floor jack to be able, be able to articulate kind of the axle up and down so that I can get everything aligned and get these bolts off safely and nothing will fall or, or injure me at all. So that's gonna be my next step. I'll talk to you in a little bit. So the way that I've supported the trailer is I used a block of wood for weight distribution on the axle itself because my jack's too big to get right on the bottom of the spring perch there. So I've got two big three ton jacks and those are gonna support the frame brace. I got one on each side and those will support without question and not cause any damage. So we're gonna very slowly lower it back down now and turn my jack handle just a little bit. We're gonna set it right on top of there. Just like that. No bowing or anything of the uh, axle. And we are set. We're gonna leave the floor jack in the exact same place it is right now because that's how we're gonna raise up or down our axle because the axle is completely clear right now and can spin we can lower it up and down while we replace uh, all of our bolts i'll be back in just a little bit when i'm ready to get started so here's where we're at we've got our wheel off i've got the frame supported nicely by two different very heavy duty jack stands there's actually like a sub frame that that uh, holds the axle that's all supported so we got that going on on both sides to distribute weight. Won't cause any damage there. I've got um, my floor jack with a long piece of four by four underneath the axle itself so we're not gonna damage the axle tube. Kinda distributes weight real nice. Now I've got the floor jack right now just barely putting any pressure on that axle. We're just trying to make it not drop. So I'm doing that so when I start removing bolts, all these bolts, my axle doesn't just flop on the ground. So. Um, should be a pretty straightforward process. The way I'm going to do this is my Zerk fittings are actually going to go to the inside so they're easier to grease. So we're going to end up taking bolts like this and flipping them around because right now, um, the way they are, uh, I won't be able to get my, my grease gun on these behind the tire if I put them here. So we're going to end up turning those around. That's not a big deal. Um, if you guys are all wondering what these are, those are sumo springs, which is kind of like a shock absorber for um, trailer suspension. So I got those quite a while ago. They have been awesome. It feels like the trailer has a sway bar. It's far more stable. Um, you know, going down the highway, it of course 
reasonable speed. The trailer tracks a lot better. Uh, those were a very, very good investment. I've got those obviously on both sides. So highly recommend Sumo Springs. But yeah, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get these out. I'm going to get started on this and I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I got the situation figured out. So what I had to do is go ahead and take off a back bolt, kind of the same process that I used before. Um, I just lifted the front back up in place, took out the back bolt nice and easy. Notice these are just kind of flopping there. I uh, used the jack to kind of raise and lower the axles. I need it with kind of weight distribution block of wood under there just so we don't, again, pinch this axle tube because these are hollow. Don't want to damage your axle tube. But yeah, now I've got access to both bushings. So I'm gonna work real quick to drive those out. And I'm going to take out this top bolt to finish the job up there. Uh, the torque recommendation on this job is, it says 30 to 50 foot-pounds. That's a pretty huge range. I'm going to grease it up real well. I'll aim for the middle, just 40 foot-pounds on that and see how that does or how that feels. But uh, once I get all this driven out and kind of the new hardware back in, um, I will start videoing again because there's really not much to see. We're just taking bolts out and putting new stuff in. So I'll talk to you soon. So it was very easy to get the bushing out. This is a little thin, if the camera will focus on it, plastic bushing. Um, wasn't any grease in this in the factory at all. It's just dry as a bone, which is probably why it's squeaking. Really, really ugly. So that's it, that's a little plastic bushing. So how I drove it out, I just used a 12 millimeter socket that I had, kind of a deep socket. Um, and camera won't focus on it, but there it is, a little 12 millimeter. I just set it on the end of the bushing and gently tapped it out. For those of you guys that live in a rust belt, you may need to soak this all down with uh, penetrating oil uh, prior to doing this, but it did just punch that bushing right out nice and easy. So um, I'm going to grease up one of the bronze bushings, get it installed, uh, relift this axle up, so at least I can get the front bolt in. Now the grease they call for, I thought it might be a molly or something like that, but it was just standard wheel bearing grease. It was a NLGI. Uh, GC rated number two grease just standard same stuff you'd put in your in your axle so that's uh, that's what I'm gonna be using so I'm gonna get this all assembled and then I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like when it's all finished okay putting in the new bushing I didn't want to tap on it with a hammer kind of as the instruction said or drive it in with a bolt or anything like that so what I did is just grab the C-clamp and um, I'm using one of the shackle hangers out of the Dexter kit and if you can see it, I greased the inside of the spring eyelet really, really well. And I'm using the um, shackle bracket just kind of as a press plate and uh, just gently uh, tightening the vise and it's pressing the bushing right in without damage. Um, the bushings are pretty thin. I was just worried that if I started hammering on it or doing anything else, I would deform the end or, or damage the end of the bushing. So that's how I'm doing it. And that's probably how I'd recommend everybody else do it as well. Just use one of these shackle brackets and just press it right on in. So that was easy. Um, got it all pressed in and the bushing's ready to go. No damage to the end of it. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these two. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take out the upper, gonna take out the lower, get everything taken care of. And then I will come back uh, as soon as it's 100%. So putting the rear bolt in, I found one thing that I really don't like that is really just kind of poor engineering and they, they definitely can do a lot better. So this top bolt of the shackle, I've got molly around it right now and then I've got the standard NLGI a GC rated uh, grease in the bushing there. But anyways, um, this top this top bracket, what they have, instead of a metal tube that the bolt goes through that you can actually grease, there's no bushing or anything. And the bolt itself, the camera will focus on it, you can see these big wear points. Come on, camera. There we go. So it's just riding on those two points. So all the trailer's weight is riding on those two little tiny hinge points. And it's just grinding into the bolt and it's also wearing upwards inside this bracket. So it's wearing metal to metal against it. And there's really no way to grease it unless you take the whole bolt out, lift the trailer, and then put some grease in there. Now what should, should have been done from the factory is inside there since it's just hollow right now there should have been a steel tube that went inside there at minimum so that the bolt could kind of distribute weight over the tube and then distribute it up those two little links so you can't put a bushing in there or anything like that and when you end up putting on your hanger that also moves a little bit just a small amount with the suspension it's enough that 
it's already after a relatively short time just uh again sorry for the camera focus but it is just eating into this bolt and i mean it's eating quite a bit there's you can kind of really feel it so if i had 20,000 miles on this that would probably be all oblonged and egged out up in the bracket and this bolt would probably be to a dangerous level so i think they can do a lot better job on this later on the next time i do a service or have this guy lifted um i'll probably have the tube ready i'm gonna go buy some steel the right diameter and i'm gonna insert a piece of tube that gets pinched in there and i'll put some grease in there and make sure that the actual greasable bolt will work inside of it and uh, distribute weight a little better but just a really poor design save money and and they could have done a lot better so just wanted to cover that part here in the video so here's the job complete um got everything bolted up went in real easy once i put the front uh, bolt in the shackle bolt just they were already pre-aligned slid right into place it was nice and easy um, again i just greased the top one the best i could i just used a molly but again there's no steel tube i just i find that built-in wear point just to be ridiculous and piss poor engineering and i imagine most trailers probably are built that way i'm not a trailer specialist by any means i'm more shade tree do it yourself and um, when you find something like that and when you know hardware engineering that's just crappy but anyways uh it's all together um, i'm gonna pump some grease in it when i'm all finished up but uh and go around do the other side and a little later on we'll see if all of our squeaks and noises are gone i'm under the trailer uh finishing up here and just pumping some grease in a little more than what i just put on by hand and you can see i'm um, kind of up in here you can see the little arc of grease coming out there's one on the other side so perfect that means it's greasing properly now up top this is what i was talking about so there's no tube no steel tube that that rides in and so the grease bolts just sitting there if i did grease the top one grease would just squirt out on the ground it wouldn't actually do anything and um, that's what i'm gonna have to make a steel tube for too so uh it can actually be greased and it's not going to wear the bolt out quickly and wear the chassis out as well so that's the issue i'm talking about is right there it should have a tube somewhat like this uh, leaf spring has um, just going right through the middle that you could put a bushing in but other than that that's uh it's a job done and put it back on the ground and there's no squeaking we didn't notice anything so that's that's great that's exactly what we we're going for one small issue i am glad i caught gotta fix it here real quick but when i tighten this bolt down since i reversed it so the zerk was on the inside the splines did not pull in properly into this piece of steel. They were already kind of pre-pulled through on the other side. So I'm going to have to fix this. I'm going to just have to take it back off and probably use a clamp to force those splines in. And that's about it. It'll be simple fix, but when you do this job and if you put the zerks in the inside, that is something to pay attention to. That is something you need to take note of on both sides. So when you flip those over, just make sure the splines fully set in. Okay, so that error has been avoided, thankfully. So I did have to jack it back up just to get the angle of the bolt right. And I was able to get the splines drawn into that steel bracket um, right here. So that bolt got drawn in and I was able to retorque everything down and it's good. For whatever reason, the other side didn't do that. It drew in normally and and uh, worked just fine. So, but this side did and I'm glad I took another look under here and caught that and uh, that'll be the end of that. All right, so everything is back together. Wheels are torqued, we're all set. And uh, before, if we even pushed on the side of this trailer, kind of as you heard in a very early video, it just squeaked and you could hear it squealing, but outside it was 10 times worse. It was the shame of any campground or trailer or place or anything we went to, because it was just embarrassing pulling in the amount of squeaking that this thing did, just driving even on a flat road. So now that we've got uh, the Dexter wet bolt kit in, everything is greased up. Um, I'm going to have my son start shaking the heck out of the trailer and uh, bouncing it back and forth. And just as we had hoped, there is absolutely no noise. We have no squeaking coming out of this. It's awesome. All right, Darren, that's good. Cool. Now we can go check to see what we threw out of the cupboard shaking it like that. But that's it. Uh, I do recommend this wet bolt kit big time. Um, this bolt kit should have come 
on this axle already from the factory is what really what they should do but of course they save a penny and and uh, put those old plastic bushings in and didn't even grease them so uh, again definitely take a look at this wet bolt kit if you guys are also the shame of the campground when you come in and squeaking and squealing and driving in all embarrassed so thanks for watching we're back at the storage facility, kind of where we uh, started this whole thing this morning, and this is after we've got our wet bolt kits on. And uh, we're going to drive through the same bumps and ruts kind of we did at the storage facility this morning that made all the squeaky noises and all that. And let's see how the uh, trailer does now, and uh, after we got this kit on. And not one single squeak. This kit really works. I recommend it to all of you guys.